Ah, look, this is how we should have started. Yes, I always set my sessions to 32 bit. In general, 32 bit is taking, I think it's like, I'm trying to get the multiple versus 16 that 32 bit is. Cause it's like something in the 16 millions of steps in between versus tens of thousands of steps. The dynamic range in 32 bits is greater than the dynamic range of like all sounds on earth. Yeah, so 32 bits better. Yes, we do have. Look, so this is actually, look. So what we have here, oh, let me figure out a way to, because this is, this is why we're doing it this way as opposed to, and then up, and then I'm looking at the screen while doing this. You should drop a link to that PDF. It is literally just a bunch of graphics that I lifted off the internet. If you can't find them yourselves, then you are destined to fail. Repost. Yes, the VOD will be available. So in general, signal flow looks something like this on a, I don't know why this is happening like this, I guess. Why? Why is this? Why can't it just show one page at a time? Yeah. Look. Cool. Maybe because it's in preview. Maybe if you open the actual thing. Open no, it's preview. a PDF. Open with preview. Maybe. No! What? Spoilers. <sighs> What's the setting? Nate, it. help. Nate. 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 Don't tell me what to hide. I like the sidebar. Make it full screen and then what? Then I gotta hide me. Can y'all even see what I'm what I'm showing? Can you see can you read on your screens? Okay, so this is console signal flow broken down to where you have can I point? Oh, yeah. So you have, like, the mic panel, and you have the mic, which goes, and uh, you can see the arrows are showing in which way the audio is flowing. So you have the mic panel, which is going to mic lines, which is going to channel mic input, which is going to either you can have, like, the pad, the pre, the mic trim, all that. And then you have the choice, because you have a switch right here, to go from channel line input or mic input. So you have these are your two choices, and they'd be at the top of a, of a channel strip. Where is it? View. Oh my god, this is this is my nightmare. This is truly a nightmare. Okay, there we go. Can y'all read that? Sick. And now I'm just afraid to move anything. There. Okay, so this is it. This is signal flow, right? You see everything. It's all there. And everybody sees everything. We're learning together. And so... <sighs> It's, it's hard to show without a channel strip, but essentially you look at it, if we could pull up a channel strip right now, 
and show you at the very top it would have like mic or line and then it would have like pad 48 volts trim in the very beginning right and then as you go down it would have all your inserts so it would have like your phase your filters your eq and then it will have your channel fader but before that it should say it should also say compressor right here and then you have like your insert sends and returns so if you want to add anything else into the chain that is 100 percent affecting your signal you would put it here then you have your channel faders your pans your routing matrix so if you want to group everything or send it anywhere like this is where you would be starting to do that right you, and then you have your cues which is if you see it goes out and it doesn't return because you're just sending it off to a cube a Q mix at this point and then you come down and you have your aux sends which are sent out and then you have your aux returns which are re returned after here um and let's go oh no why? Why, Nate? Try just arrow key down. Yeah. Try just arrow key down between pages. Whoa. So these are like Pro Tools. This is all on the exam. This is all on the exam. The pad is literally for extremely hot signals, and that's where you would use the pad that's about it oh we have uh gain staging in here open note test all short answer essay essay answer only so what i want to do here before we continue because this is a lot of information um let's go to this this is really hard for me to compartmentalize everybody's questions hold on I can tell the questions. Thank you, Nate. Can I can I make this stand? Perfect. So when you're thinking about all of this, this insane thing that we're showing you, um, in regards to Pro Tools, which we're looking at here, right? Cheating. And feel free to ask questions as we go because it'll better prepare me for what you all do and do not know. Dude, if you just, I, I promise if you Google signal flow chart, that's the one. All this is, all the, all these are not special. There's nothing unique about what I'm showing you. I just, I, I found um examples that would be easy for you to find on your own alicia she says hi nate 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 says hi in his own way let's go back to this one Yes, yeah, so I use 32-bit float, and I use 44.1, mostly because 32-bit float is giving you a much more accurate image, and 44.1 is the, is the uh, sample rate at which most music is listened to, and so if it's going to be downsampled to 44.1, I find no harm in working in 44.1. Would I like to work in 96? Sure. Could my computer handle it? Absolutely not. Is 32-bit float versus 16 much more important than 44? Uh, 48 versus 44 one absolutely so if we're talking about bit depth if we're, if we're gonna go dictionary definition of bit depth the bit depth determines the number of possible amplitude values that we can record for each sample the most common bit depths are 16 24 and 32 each is a binary term representing a number of possible values. Um, the higher the bit depth, the more values. So when you're talking about 16-bit, you're getting 65,536 values, uh, amplitude values per sample, right? 24 is 16,777,216 values. 32 is 4,294,967,296.
So we're going from 65,000 to billions. Right? And so if we're talking, we can... There we go. So the higher the bit depth, the more accurate of the image you are taking. So when you're talking about waveforms and how they're captured digitally, digital um, digital audio is basically little screenshots of the audio, right? And so to capture a full the full spectrum of audio, the 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, which is what we try to capture in digital audio at a minimum, with the Nyquist theorem, you need to ca have, um, what is it, 20 thousand not twenty thousand two two times twenty times right why why is the definition in here so strange what do you mean? the definition of the nyquist theorem like how exactly how many samples you need to have Two times, right? Sorry. So to cap, so the reason that we have forty-four point one hertz is because to capture twenty hertz to twenty k hertz, you need to have um, a sample rate of forty-four point one k hertz, right? And so forty-eight captures in a more accurate, and then ninety-six captures an even more accurate amount, right? So you have the sample rate, which is how many pictures you take per second which would be 44,100. And then you have bit depth, with the, which is the amount of values you get. So like this, this little, the up and down in the waveform would be the bit depth and the left to right would be the sample rate. So as you get the higher and higher bit depth and sample rate, you get much closer to the error. I wouldn't say no error, but I would say less. Whereas like analog audio would be a, a direct image of a direct reproduction any questions this is too far we're going too far in the lesson plan ooh It doesn't make your music better. It makes the what you're capturing more accurate. But when you think about it, nobody's listening at 88.2 anyway. So this is gain staging in an analog world, right? Gain staging is maintaining a level between clipping and noise floor that you, where you're capturing the most accurate image of the audio without having too much noise floor and without clipping. So when that nominal level where you're somewhere in between is where you want to be, right? And that's when you that, that's when we're working with analog recordings, when we're working with mixing in an analog space because you're worried a lot more about a noise floor in an analog world. In the digital wor world, noise floor is not nearly as important. So you're free to record synths and digital reproductions of sounds as low as you want because you're not worried about when you turn them up, there will be this noise floor involved. Um, so what you, what you tend to be concerned about in the digital world starts to be your overall level of everything combined versus the level of everything individually and how you maintain sonic quality and um energy and loudness without clipping and without going over and a lot of people forget that um what you listen to is a summed version of every instrument right so when you're talking about every instrument 
and we had this question in the chat so if you know this understand that there are people that don't and i think for every lesson i think it's good to understand that there's things that you know that other people might not there's 600 people in here and there's more people that will watch this in the end and as we do more of these we'll be more comfortable and we'll cover more information so there will be more things that you'll be like oh i know that but by the time by the end of it you'll have learned enough that you'll be like oh this is something i didn't know so you have all your individual tracks and they're all So you have all your individual tracks and they are all within within their uh, waveforms are none of them are clipping individually but when you get to the end and you have a track that is combined and you, everything's at zero let's say but nothing's clipping and your track is doing this just drawn it's coming across what happens in the digital realm is that it throws away everything above zero. So every time you cross the threshold, instead of getting harmonic distortion, you get digital distortion. Digital distortion is when your computer says, hey, this is too loud. This is hitting zero. What happens now? Your computer decides to start throwing away ones and zeros to save space. And so digital clipping is that sound that's it's not harmonic. It doesn't bring anything musical to the table. Obviously, when you when you start to learn more about mixing, you start to get deeper into the mixing world, you have digital clipping, you have clippers, you have all these things that you do on purpose. Soft clipping, etc., that you do on purpose later in the game. Um these things, when you start learning, it's better to just avoid clipping in general. True, true. No, digital clipping is a thing if you clip in... A digital format let's see um, I think we're done with these so that was it for the graphics on signal flow but in general so what you're worried about in signal flow when you're talking about the definition of things you have mic level which is the level of, that is coming generated by a microphone through pre or pre pre any processing the mic that you the mic level coming out of a of a microphone is the weakest level that you can possibly get which is why it needs pre's which is why it needs the boost which is why it needs 48 volts occasionally um and then you have instrument level which is somewhere between mic and line and it's usually um straight out of an electric guitar straight out of a keyboard and it usually needs just boom one little DI and you're good to go. Line level signals are signals that are coming out of a pre or out of hardware that is giving them the boost from mic to line. Um, just trying to cover a little bit more of the definitions. A bus is a signal path that can be used to combine individual audio signal paths together. It is used typically to group several individual audio tracks which can then be manipulated as a group like another track. Um, inserts are an access point built into the mixing console, allowing the audio engineer to add external line level devices to a signal to the signal flow between the mic pre and the mix bus. These are affecting 100% of the signal, which is why, in general, we use sends for um, reverbs and time based uh, effects as opposed to compressors, etc. Really just here to know how to stop the delay while recording in Pro Tools. Um, you don't have to you, uh, you don't have to sit through a th four hour lecture to, if you just Google that. <laughs> just letting you know. Google got you. 
That seems like... It's very strange. Did we not do that? Um, the, the, just the last no, one. They specifically didn't want it for the other one before. I'm not really sure. The second one? I think both of them. Is it out? Oh, then probably do it the first one. Confusing. Yeah, I mean, I could show you right now if you want it. So you can be on your way. Um, in general, you got a playback engine. If you're recording, you want your playback uh, buffer size to be lower between 64 and 128. 32 if you have an amazing computer. Um, that will usually handle all the delay issues. And then you should also record with delay conversation on. Um, and that's about it. I mean, amplifying the signal in the digital world is usually a, a emulation of analog amplification. If you're gaining something up through a pre or on the output of a compressor or uh, through saturation or distortion, things like that, like if you're adding gain through other means it's digitally, it is usually just a... emulation Let's see so for the rest of the lesson because signal flow is in general something that should be most of y'all will not have to deal with outside of the digital realm much. In general, most of you will have the simplified version of signal flow in your life. Great, we're done here. Um, which is, you know, mic, pre, maybe a compressor or an EQ somewhere in there, which, you know, uh, comp, EQ, pre, mic, going into your interface. And then out of your interface to two speakers or to, and also to your computer. And that would be it. This is this this quick signal flow, which is very simple, is most of what you're going to be dealing with in in um in the digital world. In in the vocal recording digital world right you might have one or two inputs you might have a few things but you're not dealing with the console you're not dealing with uh hardware inserts sends etc on your own so i feel as if teaching you console signal flow when i can't even show you a console is kind of crazy i can explain to you my my signal flow i can explain to you even the signal flow i have going for for twitch right now um, I do need Nate to bring me another pet notepad. Um, Nate! He's running away. Nate. Yep. Uh, do we have any more notepads? More notepads? We have more pages on that. Hmm? Oh, wait, where'd the paper go with the diagram of the... Did you start it out? The racks? Oh no, did I throw it out? Is that what that was? Nate's gonna be mad at me. Why'd you do that? I just threw out the paper that's on the desk. Why'd you leave the paper on the desk? Wasn't it on the notepad? I was writing. I was teaching the kids. We, we retrieved it. Um... Also re... Your Alexa's name is Nate. That's awesome. The mess. Well, I can text you. What? There's more things? No, it's fine. I was just like, yeah, they didn't, they didn't know if they were going to 
pay for it, so they, they were like, we were waiting to hear back on the rent. Oh. So, I don't think they like, charge them extra for it. Yeah, I don't, we don't normally. Yeah, so, it's, I'm just saying it's like totally cool. Yeah. Good luck, kiddos. Five seconds slow mode. I like to check on crazy. I'm keeping up. All right, two ten. Later, dude. Say bye to Nate. Bye, pupils. Catch oh. you on the chat. So what I want to do here. Oh no, oh no. What I want to do here is talk about how signal flow, before I start importing any audio or before I start doing anything, I want to talk about how all of this applies to Pro Tools and all of this applies to DAWs in general. And for anybody who doesn't understand, everything I'm saying about Pro Tools other than the actual active instantiating things applies to every other DAW there is. Anytime I talk about insert, sends, busing, anytime I talk about overall volume, every time I talk about managing headroom, every time I talk about routing or anything like that, other DAWs have their own version. I mean, you missed all the... If you're going to ask Nate a question, he's gone now. So when I talk about things like... Also, I'm, I'm also going to try and cover which quickies I'm using when I'm doing things. So like, shift, command, N, new track. And then you go command, up and down arrows. And you if you see, I'm changing from stereo to LCR to mono. So if, say I want to create a mono audio track. Say I want to create 10 mono audio tracks. I did that. And I never touched this mouse, right? Yeah. Yes, save. So we're talking about creating a session. We're talking about audio. These are everything in Pro Tools is a digital representation of that signal flow chart that I showed you, right? So imagine these as individual audio channels on your console. And then if you go to inserts, if you really want to imagine it as a console, if you, if for reasons that might make everything easier for you, we can go UAD and then scroll down. I love the scroll. I don't know why people search. This is the most fun part of working. Let's just do the legacy. And this is what you would see on a console, right? At least at least the insert section and filters and gain, right? The only thing we're missing is the faders and the sends, which they don't need to do within this. But you would come in and you'd have like all your audio would go through this first, right? So signal flow wise, this is happening before the output gain. So everything that's happening here is happening to the audio that you would see here so say just imagine audio here right um so so say we've recorded audio and the audio is here the first thing that this audio is being treated by in the in the terms of signal flow is the first plugin right which in in the real world based off like how music is going now you would have this. Oh, nope, it's not Autotune Pro. So the first thing you'd have on the track is Autotune. Then you would have, you know, your EQ, your compression, whatever. I'm just, you know, if you want a gate, you have a gate and you, uh, you know, you just start doing little 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 EQ this is the worst EQ ever don't do this to a vocal we have a level one hype train going that's crazy um
Uh, monks, I appreciate you trying to help. I don't want it. I promise you, I don't want it. And as, and as as we go on through the lesson today, whoa, there's, I'm trying to teach, but I also want to thank everybody. So hold on. Thank you, DJ Cheeto. Thank you, Burrito. Thank you, whoa, Leo. Oh, everybody's rhyming today. D thank you, Daga. Thank you, Ori and DBs. Well, look at all the subscribers. Also, if you have Twitch Prime, you can give me Jeff Bezos' money, which is pretty cool. So let's just say you're instantiating all your dynamics. You threw a fucking crazy compressor on there, and I guess, I don't know, I just clicked one. Oh, no! Ah, we have it. And like another EQ or whatever and fucking a DS or I need I'm gonna I'm gonna have to start searching for stuff soon. And you get to the point that you have all your inserts and now you're like, oh I wanna start adding sends. It depends on what you mean by on the ox. Thank you for the gifted, B May. And Carnival, who's gifted a million subs. Chill out, bro. I don't have a hundred thousand dollars in plugins. That'd be crazy. I'd feel like a psychopath if I had a hundred thousand dollars in plugins. Leo, what are you doing? Also, if I mispronounce or misread your name, I'm um, reading off an iPad that's far away. Level four hype train, that's crazy. Whoa, Nico. Nico, winner of Gain Station the other day. Um. So say let's just let's just do something crazy. Let's just let's just make a bunch of audio on a bunch of tracks, right? And think of this think of the think of the time roll that we're looking at as a tape. As tape. This is a tape machine, right? This is this is left to right is the time, and if you hit play, the tape machine starts spinning and that's the audio you're getting. Right? Um, oh, I, I don't know why I did that like moving it actually matters and so these are all your audio files these are all empty obviously how do you get rid of that volume line this is the clip gain line if you go to view um, clip Clip gain line, and now it's gone. Boom. Phantom with the gifteds. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. What the fuck is that? Um, it's always good, I would say, if you are new to Pro Tools for example, and you haven't learned your quick keys yet, I wouldn't say to get acclimated with these options, but I would say to look through just to see what your options are, right? So you have your main counter, you have your transport, what you can see in your transport. You know, you have this over here, so if you wanna, if you wanna add 
everything to your transport like you have the option to do this right you have your zoom controls your transport you have your midi controls etc how do you record on pro tools we're showing you awesome question so just stick around we're showing you everything we're showing everything don't worry everything will be everything about basics and pro tools will be happening command yes if you want to quick keys command space or three if you can't do that you just figure out what input you're, you're recording hit record oh i forgot that these are all active um mm, 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 mm. how did i create those clips i just consolidated empty space with shift option three boom there's more i am creating worlds within worlds and jesus wept for there are no worlds left to conquer you know Anyways, Jesus wept. If anybody knows, if anybody can tell me what I just referenced, and I don't mean the Bible, um, I'll gift you a sub later today. First person to tell me what show I just referenced. I'll wait. Oh, you already have a sub, Tennessee Slim. Tennessee Slim is correct. Dean Pelton from the best TV show community is the answer. Wait, hold on. We're just gonna we're just gonna play it. I'll probably get DMCA'd for this one. That was it. That's all I needed. I just needed that right now. It's season six. The best season, maybe. I wish I wish I could mix VR. I was uh, Somebody I know was talking about getting a VR headset to mix. But the problem is that the headset itself will change how you hear because it will change the way that audio is traveling to your ears because it will change the shape of your skull. So the only way that people could actually mix in VR is if the VR headsets got smaller. At least accurately. Or you mix in headphones. I mean, two and three are great. I think five and six, they were challenged. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to talk about community right now. It seems crazy to talk about community. I'm trying to teach people stuff. Um, yeah, Yahoo streams, uh, got the short end of the stick on that one. Yeah. We don't talk about the gas leak here. Actually just don't, whenever I rewatch re a show, I do not talk. I do not, uh, watch season four and I'd recommend if you if you haven't seen community just watch one two three five and six and you can actually they they erase four you don't actually have to watch it you can watch it later so some quick keys to understand that you need to know are option one two three four if you look at the top of the screen I am switching between modes, shuffle, slip, spot, and grid. Shuffle means that if I move something, it automatically 
the audio file will automatically snap to the closest audio file or to the beginning. So if I go up, boom, snaps to the closest audio file. Boom, 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 boom. Look at the, look at shuffle go. Look at it. Look at it go. Or if you like delete something, then everything snaps forward a little, which is this is what I use shuffle for in, in the real world. I will use it to move in the music world. It's very it's not a very musical tool, but say I want to move this four bars earlier and I want to move everything four bars earlier. I will go to grid highlight, however, say just imagine that's four bars and then delete. And now everything's moved forward. Right. So that's why shuffle is important. It's important for large batch edits like that. I'm just undoing command Z. Um, this is a really good exercise for me because I don't think about what I'm doing. Spot, if you move, it'll ask you exactly what time code you want to move something to or bars and beats or whatever. So if you want to do it that way, that's what spot is for. Grid keeps everything lock to the subdivision of the grid you're in if you want to check the subdivisions you go to grid right here and you can go down to 164th note and so now every time i move i'm moving by a max a minimum of one eighth note spot is spot is almost exclusively used in um post audio post for television it's perfect for when you know there's a sound at a certain time and you and everything's on time code and you're like okay i i have this explosion here and i want to move it to the time that it needs to be exactly you use spot um key command to change the grid yes i'm going to show you all the other key commands i don't use them all because i use the ones that help me the most more often um Was figured out. I press option with my thumb. I'm holding option with my thumb, and I am pressing one, two, three, four with my with. That's like this, like, like a claw. And then if you want to switch your tools, you have command one, two. So you have your zoom tool. Two is uh, selector, or two is trim, rather. So you have two. Then you have you could if you just keep pressing two, you can scroll through all the different types of the tool. Then three is your selection tool. Four is your grabber. Five is your audition. Six is your pen. And seven is the worst thing in the world, the smart tool. So you have all your options. Really, you just need option two, three, and four more often than not, right? So you go like this, and then you go like this, and you go like that, and you go like this. And like, look, look how fast that was. So I would say for new for new Pro Tools users or new DAW users, Pro Tools specifically in this case, um, the smart tool is, let me show you why the smart tool is bad. So I'm on the smart tool now and it's all the options all together, right? You have every option depending on where you're clicking, but you have to click a specific part of the waveform. So if I wanna grab this waveform, I have to go down here and grab. But if I go up here, now I'm selecting. And so if I wanna go like, this is so slow, I can't deal with it. Um, whereas if I wanna grab, I go this, now I grab. If I wanna select, now I'm there. If I wanna grab again, now I'm there. Now I can select again. Now I can trim much faster. Bro, saying that you're, you're not gonna change off of the smart tool because you're familiar with it is not a, Good excuse. The smart tool is slow and it's bad and you look like an amateur. Straight up. I, un I understand that a lot of people use it. I understand everything about their arguments for using it. 
the um, sacrifice. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a there's a stream description. I like how you use a professional using a tool as a reason for you to use a tool as opposed to uh, just listening to the facts. Josh can use whatever he wants. He has the credits to do so. What I'm saying is if you're a new engineer and you want to look better, the smart tool is slower. When you use to the original when you get used to the individual tools, they are faster. 100% of the time. I understand that like TZO uses a smart tool, a great engineer with a huge credit list. He can do whatever he wants. You are not those people. I don't know if you know that. Just a fact. It's just a fact that the smart tool is faster. And I like, like people get so defensive and they're like, but this person uses it. I'm like, yeah, they can do whatever they want. They can do whatever they want. They can do whatever they want. They've already done their thing. I'm telling you, in order for you to get from point A to point B, certain things help, and this is one of them. I learned it from my boss. I, I was on the smart tool when I first started working. The smart tool is slower. I got much faster and much more acclimated with Pro Tools, and also, like, straight up, if, you, if I can do this, if I can do what I'm doing with one hand, does it really look like I'm doing anything hard? Whereas if I'm, if I'm focused and I'm using both and I'm doing everything I need to do and I'm grabbing and I'm doing whatever, like... It takes a higher, it's a higher skill ceiling to do. I just think it's funny, like, just don't get defensive. I'm teaching you something that's a fact. It's faster. Me, B, me, Baines, and TZO have gotten in this argument before. Baines switched over. He thinks it's faster. I switch over. I think it's faster. TZO is comfortable with what he's doing, so he kept it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm in no position to judge TZO who does more songs than I than I do. Anyways, every time I talk about the smart tool, it's the same. It's the same reaction from a bunch of people with three credits combined. Like, smart tool is slower. If you want to change from bars, beats, minutes, second time code, feats, and frames, samples, etc., those are here. In general, in music, you will always want to be in bars and beats. In television, feats and frames and time code are more important. Someone freestyling in the chat. I just want to be sure what I, I, and like, look, it, my point is my point. The faster, if you want to be faster and if you want to look like you know what you're doing and no one knows you and you don't have credentials, the smart tool will slow you down and it'll make you look more amateurish. If you know what you're doing and you don't need to impress every, anyone and you have a credit base, do whatever the hell you want to do. I'm talking about people that want to build a clientele and want to look like they know what they're doing in a world where if you, when you walk in the room, people assume that you don't know what you're doing.
I uh, have questions about the meters. Um, right now, I'm just using linear. I like Protos Classic, linear. Um, there's a, a dictionary. We can look up the definition for each in the Pro Tools manual. I just use the one that I'm used to. I don't personally use meters at all when I work for the most part until the very end. In general, I find myself just avoiding the little red dot at any point. It's not PPM discussion time. Um, we're talking about Pro Tools Basics, and that's we're not that's not in the basics world. Um, talk about minutes and seconds versus feet and frames versus time code. Time code is based off SIMT. Feet and frames are uh, based off the the film measurement. Um, if you want to work in samples, it depends on your sample rate, and it breaks down to per second. So you go here, and you have you know, 8,500,000 samples or whatever by the time you're a minute in. Um, again, in general, if you're working in music and you're doing edits, you want them to be on the grid. Um, when you're setting tempo, you can go here, type your tempo in. You can also identify beat. So say, say this is, say this is four bars, right? And you want it to be four bars. You command I and you start and your end and you just hit five and now that's four bars and your tempo is now set to 112 if you want to keep it at 112 for the whole song boom or my bad actually i fucked that but let's just go here go five there so how do you loop a section you highlight it and you make sure you are in loop playback and not in a punch mode, and then you hit play. If you want to loop record, you hit this, highlight, and hit three, and you would record in a loop. Obviously, nothing's record enabled. Identify beat. That's what I just did, right? Identify beat is something you need to be very familiar with counting. Um, in general, from what I, what, what I can assume about the people here is that we're mostly working in digital production where the beat, the beat, the BPM per song is usually very clear or here, actually, you know what we can do here? Hide and make it active. Um, let me do this. Shift option I is import session data. Shift command I is import audio. Uh, beat reference. I'm just going to import the beat reference for this. Okay. Okay, so. So if you just go to the first transient, hit B, hit command I, hit five. Now everything should be on grid, right? Oh, I think it's the samples in there. This has a lot of beat switches. This actually might be very good for us to do. So, because I'm pretty sure that this will not adhere to any grid immediately. Um, let's see. Let's uh, go back to the GoPro. Okay. 
real quick because I don't want to accidentally show you some old files because I've done that before. Did I produce this? No. So yeah, I got I got 94.6 as the VPM. The VPM is 95. Usually when you do identify beat, it'll cut, get you as close as possible. But in these in these times with uh with um the way that there's a sample offset, you usually get a few BPM off unless you do unless you count out the whole song, at which point you could probably tap tempo. And the easiest way to tell if you have a loop is to highlight. No, I, didn't, I believe let mode produced this. This is... Uh, the last song from the student one we got a we got a last minute addition to the album uh because the only song it was a it's the songs i believe has been released but it's the only song i didn't mix and they were going to put it on and they were like upon hearing the mixes decided to add have me mix this as well so we're talking about Pro Tools Basics, Key Focus, etc. In general, you want to be in Key Focus Mode, which is right here. Keyboard Focus Mode, which means that like when you hit a certain letter, things happen. So R and T, zoom in and out. A and S, uh, cut. So if you have a marker here, you press A, it cuts everything before. If you have a marker here, you cut S, it hits everything after. Uh, hitting F is, a fa is for fades. So you highlight and you hit F and it fades. And if you hit option or command F, you get uh, the option to change more info about the fades. Uh, command I is to add a beat marker. So you highlight the region and then you have your start and your finish and then you tell them exactly what it would be. And it will change the tempo for that time. Can you get guarantee the beat is on tempo? The only way to guarantee the beat is on tempo is to understand the BPM is to get the BPM right. If you, if you, if, if you, so exa for example, for example, I leave all my videos up. If you want to watch them, you have to subscribe. I do not leave anything up for non-subscribers because this is all free for the most part. And it's all education that people pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for. If you, I believe that like asking someone to contribute $5 to the cause to watch a VOD is not harmful considering the fact that if you, if you, uh, watch when it's live, it's free. Um, Someone said salty. Um... So, for example, say you couldn't figure out that the BPM was 95, and if if you can't, there's always programs like Mix and Key. You import your audio, you tell it, it'll usually get it within a BPM or two. It might syncopate it, it might tell you 80 when it's 120, but if you can listen with your ears, you can tell that it's wrong. And if it's syncopated, you could tell it's two-thirds of what it should be, right? Usually, or three-fourths. Um... Some, some odd subdivision of what it should be. Um, if you 
want to do it by ear, you can tap tempo. So like, hold on. There's a million ways to tap tempo. Um, I have one right somewhere. Tap tempo, tap tempo, tempo. Where's my tempo? Where's my tempo? This is the worst day of my life. I'm just really good with all those subs. You are just really good at gifting subs. You know what I mean? Damn, people thought I froze. It worked. That's all I was hoping for. Um, so, for example, you know this is five bars, right? Like I said, the only reason it was off by a little is because there's a little bit of a gap right here. So, obviously, like, that little gap causes to be off by 0 .04. Um, the easiest way to get rid of that gap is to do this. You go a little of this, you go copy, you go paste, and then you go shuffle mode and you delete it. And now everything should be on the grid exactly. All you have to do is, you know, then drag it back out. And now when you go, it's always on the fucking grid, no matter what kind of moving fast yeah i am you know why because i'm not using the smart tool but if you want to do it in slow motion so you have your file right and you know if you get a file from FL Studio, or a lot of times you have latency in other DAWs. So what I do is, this is where you want the, you want this, you want your transient, right? So you go, you're in grid mode, you have tab to transient on, which is right here. Tab to transients. You hit shift tab, and it highlights everything. You hit B, command C, then you hit enter, enter to go to the beginning, and then you hit command V, then you hit option one to get to shuffle, then you hit delete, then you immediately go back to grid mode, and that's everything I did in, those, in that half a second. And then I just dragged it all out. All that took me no time at all. It's not a lot of steps. That's just all the steps it takes to do to get it, your transient exactly on the one. And yes, if there's a tempo switch, you would be able to, you know, identify the tempo switch. Say like, say right here, it went down to, uh, you go here, you hit a little pencil mark and then you drag it down and now your tempo's changed. It's not an actual tempo change. Um, we can, if we want, to instantiate real tempo changes. I mean, it took me literally no time at all to do that. I don't know why y'all are worried about steps. I did it in milliseconds. I didn't, I, I've read the Pro Tools manual probably 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Uh, I've also studied this and I also have worked a lot. And I also, a lot of what I learned, a lot of everything I'm teaching y'all is what I learned when I was working for Ben, who I will have on the stream at some point. 
Ben Allen said the first time I ever opened a pro session and started to work, he was like, why on earth would you, would anybody ever hire someone if you're, if this hand is free, right? If this hand is free, if you're never using quick keys and you're like this, and then you go up here and you go to edit and you go to like, uh, where is it? Uh, copy. And then you go over here and you go over to edit and you go paste, right? And you, and you're like that slow. Who can't, which one of the people in this chat could not do that themselves? Your mom could do that. Your grandma could do that. That is not, you're not skilled at using the thing that someone is paying you to use, right? The only reason I dragged it out was to, uh, for consistency's sake. It's just like, a, I want everything to look perfect all the time. But if I go highlight, B, grabber, move, highlight this, move, and I like want to listen or whatever, and then highlight, uh, boom, move, then I do this, and I duplicate, 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 and I'm doing all this really fast. Um, why? Well, who can, like? You need to know what you're doing to do these things. The less you use your mouse hand, the better you are at Pro Tools. And yes, you can be this fast. Every DAW has quick keys to make you faster. In fact, most of Ableton's quick keys are exactly the same as Pro Tools, I believe, and same with Logic. A lot of the quick keys are the same. I think, and in general, also, things to understand is like, I'm going to show you, I have a quick key, a whole quick key, yeah, uh, Command D. For duplicate um but like duplicate's important like things like this like so say i want to just like stutter this beat like that was easy you know i didn't even have to hear it to know it was going to be good because i know i'm on grid and i know what my subdivisions are right i could even go more i can go And that's why BPM is important. If you're on grid, you're never wrong, right? If you can be on grid, you could never make a really big fuck up, right? Because if I go grid and I duplicate and then I hit this, and I go to audio suite and I hit reverse and I reverse it and then I duplicate it again and it goes. Like that's always gonna sound cool. And that took no time at all. It didn't even take, like I didn't even have to think that hard. Then I could like make a cut and then like. Like this stuff is understanding Pro Tools and being able to move quickly allows you to do things like that without even thinking, just knowing it's gonna be right. And then also like think about how like someone who doesn't know Pro Tools and like heard like, and then like heard like, Oops, wrong one. Like that was like 20 edits in no time. You know, that was a reverse, an edit, a fucking verify, all that shit. Like that takes no time. And I could do that. I could do that before someone leaves the booth. Reverse reverb is essentially this. You reverse the audio, print a reverb, reverse everything back, and then the reverb is the wrong way, but the audio is the right way, if that makes sense. So like I would go, let me just duplicate. We're getting a little out of, out of uh, what we're trying to teach here, but also like I know a lot of people have this question. So like, say I want to reverse reverb up to this. Oh, just put it back here so I know where I'm going. Uh, hit this, hit reverse real quick. 
So now this is reversed, and then I do this, grab this, uh, hit, go to a reverb, deverb, whatever, make sure it's full volume, uh, plate, whatever, this. Then hit the reverse again, render, move it to the right spot. And depending on the plate you use and depending on what you're doing and how you shape it and the more you work at it, the more you do it, like it gets simpler and it sounds better. And like you work on the curve, like if I just like, you know, made this louder, put a fade on it, a better fade, put a better fade on it. Reverse reverbs are cool, I guess. But that's how you do it. Um, mm, 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 mm. Skipping steps. Um, yeah, and like the more you know about reverbs and the more you know about all that, how do you scoop the fades? Uh, Command F, and then you can do this, and then you can have equal power, which changes, I forget what, but it, like the curve is different. Equal gain, and then you can have like an S curve or whatever. And then, like, there's all these options, like, fancy something or other. I, that, I'm sure that means something. But, yeah. Boom. Yeah, let's see. I mean, I mean, when it comes to Pro Tools, knowing everything is the most important thing, right? Because, like, everything I did, yeah, reverse delay would be the same, same way. I mean, you yeah, you want reverse the audio, print the delay, reverse it back. And then make sure it's on on tempo and on time and on grid. Flattening is yeah, consolidating, printing, whatever you want to call it, audio sweeting, whatever. Um, right. So we're talking about Pro Tools basics. You start up a session. First thing you do, you check playback engine. You make sure you're on your right interface. You make sure your hardware buffer size, if your recording is low, if your mixing is high, because if you're recording, you will get that latency sound as after you pass about 128, 256, it's about like a 10 to 15 millisecond difference between what you're saying and what you're hearing, and it only gets worse from there. Um, you never want to ignore errors during playback. Dynamic pl plugin processing sometimes to me feels like it's taking more, and sometimes feels like it's taking less processing. I don't actually know. Uh, cache size, I always leave it normal, especially now. My max voices is what it is. Um, then you would check your, where is it? Not peripherals. Uh, this is what I, so say you have MIDI controllers, say you have any Ethernet controllers like, um, fader port or something like that like this is where you would go for any of that and usually they have them in their uh setup exactly how you would set it up in pro tools um io super important this is my you know hardware io right here all my outs i have 64 i believe and i think i have 64 ins as well because the goliath is a beast then all my buses i have my outputs and uh, I have my AES and I have my, uh, just those, I don't even use those. And then I have, these are all my buses that I use for, uh, interior routing. And then on my inserts, I actually have like the culture vulture. And then usually, huh? Oh, you must've deleted it. Damn it, Nate. Usually on my hardware inserts, I have, uh, I think it's at, at eight, because the Goliath is a strange routing, I think nine through uh, 18 or not. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are usually, I believe, my um, summing mixer. So I have 16 stereo or eight stereo channels of summing and so it would go out i would put the output of the buses to one two one and two three and four five and six seven and eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen and then it would come back in through an audio channel for example 
and you can change this around if you want to change anything and move everything else. The Goliath is my interface. It is, but the interface itself is fairly confusing. This is my, see, this is where my audio is coming in. It's very loud. I understand. Everybody complains that it's too quiet sometimes. So I just jacked it up because y'all are jerks. Uh, here's the routing. It's very confusing. And it's something that I'm not going to go over right now because y'all are never going to be able to need this. And if, if you ever buy a Goliath, like, you know, like you spend the money, you can learn it yourself. It's super confusing. Um, I still barely understand it, <laughs> to be honest. I'm sure Mike Dean would scold me for not studying my Goliath more. Yes, it's the equivalent of the UAD's console. The UAD's console looks a lot more like a thing that's been used by a human being ever. It does kind of look like the parent, uh... But yeah, there's, I mean, this is obviously like looks a lot more like something you would see. Unfortunately, the numbers and how they correspond and the colors and what they are, like all this is my AES, which would be like the output going to my uh, monitor controller and uh, DA. And yeah, it's just fucking a nightmare. Everything is a nightmare. And like you guys, luckily, y'all, sorry, not you guys, y'all. Luckily, in the beginning, do not have to deal with this level of routing. Um, uh, Josh has such a great... Josh Goodwin, another person who streams who you should be watching at all times. Um, I'm using the Goliath as my interface. I don't use the Twin as my interface, first of all. Second of all, uh, yes, I have a bunch of hardware. Um, I don't know if you could see that we're installing all the new hardware soon. Um, we will have... I'm going to use the restroom in a second, but I want to show you all this. Um, so... I'm going to have this. There's a GoPro here, right? GoPro. It is going to be on an arm here, attached, or I guess like here, attached, and it will show you all the hardware that's going here, all the hardware that's going here, and here. Right? And what it'll explain is this. I really wish I had a piece of paper right now. Um. Hmm. So essentially, I'm, I don't even need to show you this paper. I just need to do it. Uh, right about. Um, now I'm going to talk about my routing in general. So my routing in general, I have my interface, which has 64 ins and outs, right? 16 of them, 16 of the outs are hardware are hardwired to my summing mixer. So if I want to go out of my out of my interface to my summing mixer, that's already pr permanently hardwired to the summing mixer because I have so many ins and outs and I can do that. So I don't need to patch every time I do it. So I have hardware inserts that are 1 through 16 of my summing mixer if I want to sum. My summing mixer, the output of my summing mixer goes will be going directly to a dangerous liaison so that comes out it goes it, into my summing mixer 16 channels so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 right oh this is an insanely gibberish thing and it comes out a stereo signal the stereo signal will go directly into my dangerous liaison listen i'm getting there i'm explaining my routing and I think it's important. Oh my God.
out out into a dangerous liaison, which is a routing system itself. And the dangerous liaison will have three compressors and three EQs to choose from. It has buttons on it, which let me know what I'm selecting. So it'll be like, oh, I'm going to either choose this, this, or this, and then this, this, or this. Right? So I can have any of three EQs or three compressors in the chain, or three compressors or three EQs in the chain. So it'll be like, oh, I choose this one and this one. So now we're going two here, then two here, and then out of there, it will go into an SSL fusion, which is right here. It's already, it's already here. You can see it, right? I think you can see it. It's right there. It's just, it's not plugged in yet. It's just sitting there right for now. And then out of the SSL fusion into right back through, um, into the Goliath, straight back into the Goliath, where it will be printed back as a stereo audio track here. So it'll be a stereo audio track, it'll be like this, uh, record it back in, there'll be a little bit of a hardware delay, delete that, and I'll match it up so it's exactly where it should be, right? Um, okay, so the paper is this. So this is my Goliath, we have 16 outs, it's all going to my summing mixer. Out of my summing mixer is a stereo track into the dangerous liaison where I will pick two options. So say I pick like the first compressor and the second EQ, and then it'll go into the SSL fusion and then back into Pro Tools, right? Everything's stereo, it's a stereo track. I'm not gonna go full screen, I'm done showing everything. Um. And there will be a visual representation of this so that y'all can see. But in general, for the most part, everything that I use outboard is a luxury. Everything I have on the outside of Pro Tools, and even inside because I have so many plugins now, is a luxury. You, I did and could do everything I'm doing on my old Apollo Twin with my old headphones and nothing else most of the songs that y'all like the most that I've done or that mean the most to y'all and the reason that y'all know who I am were done on headphones, in a coffee shop, in an Uber, and in my hotel room or uh, in, my, in my old apartment in, um, in Atlanta. Like all these things, like I was not working in major studios for most of the work I've done. It's, it upsets me a little that this is, that the time I chose to start streaming is the time in which I have these nice things, right? Because I feel like I want to teach y'all from a place of, uh, you can do what I'm doing. But I also want to show you, you don't want to see the cables behind my desk, I promise. It's a nightmare right now. When we, when we do, wire everything up this week because we're gonna be, we're gonna run cables we're missing some gear it's not been delivered it won't be delivered till mid-february ish hopefully sooner um but we're gonna have placeholders for everything and we're gonna have everything uh wired up and so what what i'm planning on doing is doing like a phone stream wire day where we where i show the back of everything i can't right now because all my cameras are hardwired so it's really hard for me to like change wiring while connected to a cable um sorry we're getting we're getting off track as always oh no i wouldn't change it. so um, the reason I do everything I'm doing is to add to the process. The reason I'm doing the EQing, the reason I'm doing the compression, the reason I'm adding the SSL fusion is to add to the tone of what I'm doing. At no point do I, like, and everything I'm doing would be, so y'all have seen me mix for the most part, you see that I have like my mix bus, etc., and you see that I have my individual buses for everything, right? So instead of going out of my individual buses directly into the mix bus, what I will be doing is going out of my individual buses into the summing mixer, into the liaison, through the 
compressor through the EQ through the fusion back recorded in and then through my master bus if that makes sense tell me if I'm crazy tell me if that makes cool I'll be right back we're back Uh, I use the Inward Connections Mix 690. Um, hold on. Should we watch a video? Let me do this. Hold on this. Should we watch a video on the Inward Connections Mix 690? Um, I was looking into AD connection, uh, converters, and the converge on the Goliath is so good that to get a converter that matched up that, that I would be sure I was happier with, I would have to spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars in trying different ones first, and try them all at the same time, A, B them all, and then return a bunch. I I would like to do that. I would love to try out all the AD converters. I would love to try out all the DA converters. If anybody at Vintage King out there is watching me right now, I'll give them back. Maybe I may I might give them back. If you send them to me, you might get them back. Inward Connections, Mix 690. Steve Vai's. Ooh. Steve Vai's Harmony Hut. Oh, here we go. Page not found. <sighs> yes, I know how to play guitar. I work in music. Can I play it for you? No, absolutely not. Like right now, no. Do can, can I play for myself in in silence by myself? Yeah. I use the Inward Connections Mix Six Ninety. I'm looking for reviews of it now, so we can all watch our review together. YouTube. Oracle summing mixer. That's not what I want. So apparently I bought like the most boutique ass shit because there's not a goddamn video on the internet. I use the Inward Connections Mix 690. My accordion's right there. Don't fucking threaten me with a good time. See, the thing is, like, I don't put any weight on my skill as an accordion player, but I do put weight in my skill as a guitarist, and uh, I don't know that I am as good a guitar as I used to be. I, well, I, I know I'm not as good as I used to be. Uh, when I was like between the ages of 15 and 25 so I uh the guitar is so I got this when I was 15 I've had this guitar for 21 years which is crazy it broke twice it's an American Strat from 1997. It's got like the custom headstock choice, which is cool. It's not so common. And it's got the maple neck, which is also not so common. And it's awesome and it sounds great. It needs some work. It probably needs to be set up again. Um, the neck broke and so it's like kind of finicky. But it's, it's like my favorite color. It's one of my favorite colors. I like the, I want the yellow telly. It's seafoam green, first of all.
But yeah, my next purchase is a yellow Tele. I've always liked Telecasters. I'm pretty shit at them because the neck's a little wider and I'm used to like uh, playing on like strats and guitars with skinnier necks. I, I think if you're mixing, I don't know a better summing mixer than the Avocet. Or not a summing mixer, sorry. Better monitor controller. Uh, I've tried the Grace. The Grace is good. It's clean. It feels like the mids are a little scooped, but it's good. Um, I like the Heritage one specifically because it has the Bluetooth option. Pretty sick, but you can buy just the Bluetooth option. And uh, the dangerous one is like all around probably the most functional one with the mo with more options since the the the, the biggest problem with the Avocet is that it's like a very simple controller. There's not a lot of control within it that you can see, and it's not very easy for sh random people to use. So like if you're if you're an engineer and you've never used the Avocet before, you'll probably accidentally press a button that you don't mean to press. Um. But as far as Sonics go, and if you're if you're the only person in the room using something, the Avocet is the best. Especially the 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 new one, the two A. One of my greatest regrets in life is I was in New York, uh, like two thousand eight. And Les Paul was playing at a club because he used to do that like once a week. Uh, he would play. He's like 90 something. And he only two of his fingers were functional. And he would play like uh, he would do like a guitar uh, performance once a uh, once every other week. Um, and. I missed it and he died like a year later and he played like up until but it was like as far as like Les Paul being like you know the guy who made us use like a multi-track recording like recorder like all these things that he did for music to to miss the opportunity to see him do what he was known for is kind of sad It also, he makes, like, one of the nicest, like, like his signature guitar is one of the nicest guitars you can get. Yeah, I think he played, I think he was playing at that club, like, performing at that club until he was, like, 97. Like, I think he performed, like, up until he died. We should, we'll watch a Les Paul documentary one day. Well, didn't Gibson get bought? I forget what happened to Gibson, but I've heard that about Gibsons. Like, there's a certain year at which they were their best, like, in the 90s and, like, or, like, for example, like, they talk about, like, the 80s Japanese fenders and whatnot. Yeah, they got bought. Where were we? I used to know a lot about like guitars and amps and all that and like given given being put if somebody put me into a room with a bunch of amps and a bunch of guitars I would get a very good tone based off knowledge I had previous in my older uh, career paths um, I would be able to get a very awesome guitar tone out of the those uh, out of the options I was given would I be able to recite which guitar amps give you which tones paired with which guitars right now? Probably not, because the last time I thought about it was six, seven years ago. Um, I don't know that the 1176 is really built for the kind of volume that a full mix would give it. Four hundred twenty viewers. 
I can see myself in front. I mean, that's it's hard not to be embarrassed. I do uh not really smoke uh in a day to day. I'm not like a functional weed person. Burp, 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 burp. Why do people come here? Anyways. Hold on. It'd be hard to convince someone that I don't smoke weed. Let's talk about. Ugh. Why are you doing this to me? Single page. Ugh. Hide sidebar. Um. Mm. Damn, we're already two hours in and I feel like I've taught absolutely nothing. We might have to revisit signal flow. Ooh, okay, so here's an idea that I had literally minutes before my stream. Which, as you know, is the best time to come up with a completely new plan right before you instantiate the old plan. Um, what if I did my teaching from a different angle? What if I was here talking like this, and there's a camera there, and I was just chatting? For my teaching stuff. And then I got a whiteboard and I could draw on that. And then we could also just turn around and switch the cameras. Because we already have a camera here. We have a camera there. We got a camera there. There's cameras everywhere. I feel like I'm on a prank show. And I have my blazer so I could like really teach her it up. We'll think about it. I think this is, again, I'm not so comfortable just telling it, saying information, right? I'm much better at showing than I am telling. And as I show what I think about as I'm showing, you'll get much more information out of. But what is more helpful to y'all who are, or to the people here who are less, uh, acclimated to the pro tools world and less familiar with everything is just being told the information first because if you get shown it first you skip steps and so what i want is to get is there somebody out there i got scared I swear to God, it'd be like impossible for me to convince someone I don't smoke weed. I want a whiteboard. You go to hell. Central Pro Tools shortcuts. Look, can you see it? It's kind of faded. Save. Yes, it's a tattoo. I need to get it redone. It's kind of faded. Editing tools. Cut, whatever. Um, Command X is fine. You can just hit delete. Like, what do you need to cut? I mean, if you want to copy and delete, you know. 
Right, but but I also I understand that my way of teaching is my way of teaching, but at the end of the day, not everybody's way of learning is my way of teaching. So if I can teach in multiple ways, that'd be best. Jayote is gonna go broke one day giving me subs and I appreciate it a lot. And I will not help you when you're out of money. Uh, yeah, the programs that show keystrokes would work if I wasn't so spastic. I think it would cause more harm than good. I, I do a lot of clicking for no reason. Um, I don't know. So I learned a lot of, like, why I'm so fast at Pro Tools is a lot of, like, why StarCraft pros are so fast at StarCraft. They move a lot when they don't need to move so that when they need to move, they're already at the speed they need to be at. So you want your APM to be high so that when you start moving, you're already moving. You know, so these are basics. If you don't use these, if you if you need to, if you don't know these, like you've never used Microsoft Word, they're basically the same thing. They're they're similar to other DAWs. There are some differences. Uh, I'm trying to think of some off the top of my head. I know Logic has like a few that are just crazy, and they make everything go crazy. Right, but like I'm fast at Pro Tools because of that. So I said earlier, command shift N, and then if you want to cycle through the track options, command left and right at the window. So that's this. Hold on. Hold on. So you go command shift N, new track, up and down, command up and down arrows. Look at all the options. Look at this. Whoa. So that's that. If you want to ask questions about Reaper, I say ask Felix. Felix Byrne, B-Y-R-N-E. He is a mod here, and he only talks about Reaper, and that's all he's ever talked about in his life. I think he's like 17, and that's like, it's it's been his first words were Reaper. Um... <sighs> closed session open session these like i'm not going to say what everything is um the transport window is a super important one command one to pull up the transport window command two to pull up uh the sync window or session setup window, command one, command three for that, command four for this is um, all of the options right here, all of your automation options. Um, command five is your memory. So if you want a memory location, you hit, uh, was it? So that's not it. Wait, what's the, what's the command? What's command five and six, seven? So you have your uh, beat. This is beat detective. Same same idea as identify beat, but it's uh, f the smartest way to do it. You capture selection. You say what you want it to be. It'll tell you what it is, and then you can change. You can figure out your your template for the groove of the beat. So if everything's off a little, you can tell there. Your clip separation, so you can separate all the individual elements. Uh, you can conform the new sections to the old template. A lot of this. A lot of uh, beat detective in general should be done four to eight bars at a time and we can do it we can do a beat detective episode um i will need to get live instrumentation um but it's a simple thing to do once you understand it but it is very complicated in the way that like it takes time you need to do it in small amounts at a time uh I feel like Beat Detective is like more like an HBO show than an ESPN thing, but you know. Oh, sorry. Memory location should just enter on the number pad. Why am I so stupid? So like you want to you want to create new memory locations which are up here. It's like you know, hook, hook, hook. And then if you want to delete them, you just hit the little option and hover over it and you can get rid of them <laughs> R 
We're getting there. Mm. Mm. What? You just pressed no. So, so you know how there's return? If you enter, that's to create a memory location. Where you're, where you are clicked on is where it will go. So if I'm clicked here, you hit enter and you say like intro, and then you have a location for the intro. Very helpful. Then you're like, oh, the verse starts here, verse. And then if you want to see all them, you hit command five on the number pad and you see all, and you, this is how you manage your memory locations. Very helpful. If you, fun, if you don't have a number pad, I believe the function and the numbers does all of that. But I will say if you are a working engineer and you want to be fast and you want to work with clients and you're charging for time, then you should be able to afford a keyboard with a number pad. If you're not charging for your time, then I totally understand not having it and like using my, I use my laptop all the time when I'm at home. But having the number pad is essential, especially for recording because three is right there and enter. And you're only one click away. I did see Baines use that and Baines is the only person I know more obsessed with efficiency than me. Wait, should we? Let me call him. Oh, wait, should I just interview Baines? Not today. But like, should I just interview him? Should he should just Baines be my first interview? He is my favorite. Y'all really missed, I mean, I under like, like Clubhouse is essentially like a lot of, uh, stuff to trudge through to find the actual information and you need to do your research on who you're listening to but like there is an engineering page on there and the people that are there have a lot of information if you can get in clubhouse there's really good conversations going i had a conversation with baines the other day uh shit i'll interview baines castelli and l10 because shit it would be dope to have Elton and Castelli on at the same time because elton's the one who introduced me to castelli and he was like you guys would be best friends and i was like totally but Costelli's too busy being fucking cool or like you know and he's like a chef i don't know bro like i can just tell everybody how cool all my friends are all the time and i would just never stop but they're awesome oh yes so azerty versus qwerty i believe that Quick keys were built around QWERTY keyboards as far as like ergonomically and what is better for um, and quicker with your hands. So when I went to Europe, every in France, every single keyboard is Azerty because of the way their language works and how priority goes. Like the reason that the keyboards are set up the way they are is because of priority and what's clicked around other letters which are used the most so that when you type your fingers are rarely moving away from each other you're never doing this or moving away because of the way it's set up uh i don't know exactly why but if you look up like the history of a qwerty keyboard it'll tell you and the same with azerty there's a reason for it all right when i went over there i was trying to uh do my normal quick keys and work quickly and I'm working and I'm on tour with Thug and he is the most demanding artist on the, in the world as far as speed because he works faster than anybody else. That being said, if every time I go to type in a whatever, a s, whatever, 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 everything wasn't where I thought it was. And then also 
on a lot of their old Macs, their enter key is a different shape. It's like a longer, because the keyboard's different. So I basically just kept fucking up to the point that I was like, can we just hang out? And we just ended up hanging out. We ended up, I mixed, I finished mixing Hercules in Paris in a bunker that was turned into a studio, a World War II bunker that was turned into a studio, where the doorways were so short because everybody was shorter back then, and especially in Europe. And so the doorways in the bunker were so short that me and Thug just kept hitting our heads on all the doorways the entire day. I mean, I don't record him anymore. He definitely cut me more slack than he did anyone else. Uh, I'm sure Baines benefits from that, too. If he knows you're good and he sees you fucking up, he obviously is like, oh, it's something really bad is happening with the computer because this guy does not fuck up on a day-to-day -day basis. So, yeah, I mean, he, cut, he cuts us slack, I'm sure. Uh... So look, wait, F12, really? I didn't make this, uh, my assistant did. I'm learning with y'all. Uh, command space bar, three on the numeric keypad for starting record, space bar, three to stop. Uh, this is important. Command period to not save the take or Apple uh, or command Z to undo afterwards. If you are recording something and you 100% know it's a fuck up and you don't want to keep it, undo or hit command period. Because especially people that are recording full bands and like 20 to 50 tracks at a time and there's just like a like 10 minutes of silence and you didn't do anything and you forgot to stop recording, don't stop the recording and then delete it and then move on. You undo or you hit uh this before the before it's done because what it does is act like it never recorded twin studio yeah i've been there that's the one uh and the reason that that's important in recording a full band or multiple takes is because you're actually might run out of space if you're recording you know, an orchestra at 99 uh, or 98K fucking whatever, 32-bit float, 99.6, 32-bit float, whatever the fuck it is, uh, or 88.1, 32, and you record for 20 minutes and you have 80 inputs, you might record like 10 gigs in, in a few, in a, in a day. And so you might actually start running out of space. I don't run out of space and I don't and if you're recording one vocal it makes no sense to not save every single vocal take because you might have even a breath that you need to capture or just a syllable that you need to capture something that you might need one day and the one time you don't save it is the time it goes away in the in the in the live instrument in the live instrument world I could understand not keeping everything um I'm just going to start flying through these here they are now you can screenshot these or there's a website that has literally every single uh quick key i wouldn't clear anything from the clip section doula unless you're in your mixing phase and you know you don't need anything and then in which case i do a save copy in and only include the the top level of files quick punch solo safe important command click on the solo button very important um oh no oh no okay then we're back Ooh. so we went over this so you have f1 through four for shuffle spot grid uh shift and grid i like option one two and three and four for these personally i like option one two three four because i can go option one two three four right and then command one two three four is the other tool is the tools so i have my modes 
right? And then I slide my thumb over to command and I have my tools. I, y'all can see that the tools are changing at the top and y'all can see that the, so. Huh? You see how easy that is? And that's most of what my hands are doing when I'm making edits is making sure I'm in sl slipper grid, which is two and four, boom and boom. And normally I'll just like go through all of them. Like I'll be like, okay, I need to be in grid. Okay, I need to be in slip. Okay, I need to be in, you know? And then, mm, 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 mm. best day ever. Next, tools. We just went over this. I use these because, like, like you see how you would have to go F. Like, I could understand if you were using the function keys, how how that wouldn't feel easier than the smart tool. But if you're using command uh, one two three four option one two three four, it's faster. Very important. Import audio. Import video. Import session data. Shift uh, shift command I and shift option I for import audio and import session data. Very important. Bounce, shift option B. Export selected clip, sh uh, shift command K. So like say I just want to export just part of the audio. I go like this and this, and then I hit shift command K. Boom. The option's there. And then you could just remove it and it'll just be a file. Pretty cool. Pretty cool buttons, Pro Tools. So obviously like you hit uh, return twice, you go to the beginning, option return, you go to the end, extend the highlighted selection, so you shift return. So like you go to get to the back. Uh, and then was it shift option return to get to the end of the section? Option, yep, shift option return. So you go shift, so you have this, shift option, shift option return to go to the end of the selection. Things like that, pretty cool. Or you could you could actually shift A, I believe, or shift, what is it? Oh my God. Wait, is that what I'm doing? That's not what I'm doing when I'm doing that. There's another way to do this, and I need to think because I do it, it's like muscle memory, but I do it differently than that. I gotta think. And then P and semicolon, very important. These are like, so I'm going up and down, but this is very important because say I say I highlight this, but I wanna go down a track, boom, right? Oh, is it shift enter? Shift option enter. I guess it's what I do. I don't know, I feel like I do something else. I honestly feel like I'm doing something else. When I'm when I do that, and it, I mean it's the same thing, but I feel like I do it with one hand. I love the Red Bull Academy. It's, I wish I would do anything I could do in my power to bring Red Bull Academy back, except for drink more Red Bull, because Red Bull, uh, and I have. I was addicted to Red Bull, if that's a thing that you could be. I was drinking like five or six Red Bulls a day for like six years. And I feel like I stopped creating my own energy. Well, the thing is like you go to studios and you're there for 12 hours a day, 15 hours a day, 16 hours a day, 18 hours a day, 48 hours in a row, etc. And they have a fucking Red Bull fridge for free. I will fucking house every single Red Bull there. So you got zoom it, vertical zoom, shift option, uh, shift option this, I think, right? No, this. Wait, why is it not doing it? Zoom! Oh my God, you fucking dick. Don't you dare. 
Oh, command option. That's why. See? So to zoom in and out, command option brackets. To zoom in and out on the waveform. I'm an idiot. Baines is texting me six times. What a boy. Uh, Baines is on a flight. Um, so these are options for zooming. Memory location, we talked about this. Enter or uh, function enter. Um, delete memory location, option click. Open the memory location window, command five on the, on the number pad. Editing clips, delete. Uh, duplicate, heal, separation, trim. Oh, that's what it is. Command, wait, no. Command T is not what I want to do. Oh, Command T is, okay. So Command T is to delete everything on either side, right? So you go Command T and it, and it trims, t it tops and tails everything. So like perfect for audio files. Because let's just say you have an audio file here and like there's, dead space here and dead space here you can go, go like this and now it's all gone and then you go and then you highlight it you hit this and now it's faded and now there's a little three millisecond fade at the beginning and the end so you see how fast that was so like say you have to do say you have like a like 70 of these in a session you know you just go okay cool boom 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 or honestly, you can just hit F, I, I believe, and it'll do it too. Yeah. So you just highlight and hit F, and then you could you could uh, you could also in your in your Pro Tools preferences you can set either one. Command F gives you more options. F does both quickly. If you just highlight and hit F. Um, one thing I will say is in your Pro Tools preferences, I believe you set your fading, your fade, default fade settings, fade in and fade out and crossfade. And I believe I thought that there's a way to set it. Three milliseconds is what you want it at. If you're just doing, uh, well, we're getting to all of them, dude. We're going to get to everything. I believe it's in there. I believe my assistant would not have, see, you have command F, F also works. I don't think that they put all the command focused ones in here. Command click on the insert to bypass, to mute the send, command click on the, uh, the name, make plugin inactive, command control flick, click to make it inactive, um, copy and paste plugin settings, command shift C and V. Oh yeah. Wait, no, you just go like, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you hit, so if you wanna change all the outputs in your entire se session, command change so basically or option so basically option when when changing something makes it um bradley beats i've said it before and i'll say it again all the things that i am showing you are so available on the internet it's insane for example If you guys can't do this on your own or don't think to do something like this on your own, I 
don't know what to tell you. And I under look, I understand people in the chat are trying to be helpful. I understand that you want to help. I understand you want to link somebody that's already helping. I understand that you're trying to be helpful. I get it. You're not being helpful. You're not. Doing the work for other people is not helping them. People should be able to figure out how to Google stuff on their own. We're giving them the information. We're telling them to go on Google and that's very accessible. You are not helping by linking whatever you think you're doing to, yeah, you're not helping. You're not being a nice guy. You're not in, ingratiating yourself to anybody. You're just being someone's personal Google and like, I just, there's a way, there's a way to help and there's a way to just point someone in the right direction. And there's a way to enable and baby them. And we don't have to do that here. <laughs> but you just linked it. Willie, every time I say something, you have some contrarian thing to say based in some 17-year-old thought, and I promise you, I know better. I promise you, dude. You don't have to have, like, some contrarian argument. You don't have to do it all. You just... All right, Willie. Goodbye. I just, it's just exhausting, dude. It's truly exhausting. There's a, there's a thing we're trying to do here. And, I promise y'all that nitpicking the way I'm teaching isn't the way to do it. I just promise. How long have I been mixing and mastering? Uh, eight years mixing and mastering. I've been an engineer for 12, almost. Willie didn't get banned, dude. I wouldn't ban Willie. I just timed him out because it's just frustrating when I'm trying to make a point the whole if i'm trying to make a point it's frustrating i wouldn't ban willie he's not a bad person he's not doing anything negative i'm just trying to make a point and it's not gatekeeping i think i think the idea of gatekeeping would be that i'm not doing this fucking information right now that I'm that I or that I would put this behind a paywall. That's gatekeeping. Or that I would only tell certain parts of the information as opposed to giving a hundred percent of it away. Me saying, hey, this information is fully readily available for free on the internet is not gatekeeping. Uh oh. Kenny's kids. Um, so we're here now.
produced by Let Mode, and I'm 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 gonna get to the rest of the beat. I'm gonna get through everything. I'm just organizing things right now, cause we're going over everything today. Hello, Kenny's uh, babies, little Kenny babies. I'm sorry, Kenny dropped you in here. Uh, we're doing engineer nerd stuff. Hello. We were welcome. You're you've missed meant much of the lesson, but you're here for the fun part, which is good for me because most of you would be like, "Why is this happening? And why am I here?" So you're here for the mixing part. Random symbol. I'm glad all this stuff's named so well. It's very exciting for me. Heavy 808 can go there. So today, oh, that's a lot of people. Um, so I guess I should introduce myself. I am Alex, uh, the juice man to me. Um, my mixing tag is Alex made it juicy and, uh, or, Oh my God, Alex, this meat, this, uh, mix is so juicy. Um, so that's me. There it is. That's what people call me. That's been what people call me for almost a decade now. I don't understand what the argument is here. Um, what we were talking about today is basic signal flow and Pro Tools, or applied signal flow and Pro Tools basics. We were covering the basics. We were covering quick keys. We did a little bit of a lesson plan. Look at all these lessons. There's keyboard focus. There's a bunch of other stuff. Look, Pro Tools shortcuts. Are you, are you all caught up now? Um, there's also, you know, signal flow. Do you all understand signal flow? This is what signal flow is. I don't know if Kenny has told you about signal flow. This is what it is. And then it looks a little like this on a console. And then there's like some other signal flow stuff and gain staging is a thing. And we, we learned a lot today. So welcome to the, welcome to the applied part of the lesson. Oh, a thousand people already left. I tried. Anyways, so here's our audio tracks for the, for the instrumental. That's fucking amazing. I love that. Love a good blip. So when I mix, I usually organize things by priority. Sonics, I organize them by Sonics, then priority, then arrangement. So, for example, all these outro sounds would be usually grouped together. Uh, obviously, there's a choir for the outro filter. Choir, I would treat all the choir together, even though it is grouped in the second part. This is, uh, this is just the instrumental so far for a track by the artist Student One, who we have mixed almost an entire album for on stream. Would you like to hear a song? Yes, you would. Of course you would. Of course you would like to hear a Student One song that I've mixed on stream. What? Like, who am I even asking? So welcome. Um... just prepping a mix we went over signal flow basics we went over, we went over pro tools basics we're going we're going to go over them more and more as the stream goes on i feel like this is a good introduction today but right now we're going to start applying everything we're going to start applying our our pro tools uh quick keys we're going to start applying our basics we're going to start applying our signal flow knowledge we're going to start applying our applied signal flow and pro tools knowledge so first thing you do is you have your instrumental and you hit command G and you say 
instrumental. And now it's down here. And if you want, you can go like this, and now everything's grouped together, right? Uh, don't be afraid to follow me. Uh, you don't have to. I, uh, you know, if you're weird, don't follow me. If you're not weird, follow me. Or if you're the cool kind of weird, follow me for sure. You know, if you're just like a kind of a jerk about it, like don't follow me. If you like juice, get in here. Like freaky how? I guess. Like when I like. I guess one thing that you'll notice about the difference between me and Kenny is that I am taller than him. I think that's the first thing people notice about me and Kenny is that I am uh, taller than Kenny. Um, Kenny is actually five foot six. Um, he just only hangs out with people that are um, short and he also has every picture of himself photoshopped. I think that's an important uh, distinction. I don't want to give up Kenny's secrets, but like the man's short. Yeah, I can't even stand in Kenny's studio because he's so short and he made it, he built it to make it look like he was tall. Like every time I stand in a studio, I'm like this because yeah, it was like a funny joke that got out of hand. He doesn't know how to stop it. I kind of feel bad for him at this point.